Protein versus bond repair treatments, which one do you need? While they both work to fight damage to strengthen the hair, they work in different ways. I'm gonna be sharing with you the differences between the two and how to determine which one that you need based on your specific type of hair damage. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and here I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love simplifying things and doing step-by-step -step tutorials and talking about the science of hair. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back to my channel. I also just wanted to share a quick disclaimer that I am not a hair scientist. I'm not a dermatologist or a trichologist. I'm simply someone who's just really passionate about researching hair science. And I really like to compile that info to make it easier for you to understand, but I definitely don't know everything. And this is my understanding of the things that I have researched about proteins and bond repairing treatments. I will include all of my sources linked in the description box down below. So it's helpful to first understand the anatomy of a hair strand. So hair is made up of protein, specifically keratin, within the cortex layer of the hair. The outer layer is the hair's cuticle, which sort of looks like overlapping scales or shingles, and that's the protective layer of our hair. This is actually dead cells. And a healthy cuticle, such as in virgin hair, keeps the hair healthy and protected, maintaining adequate protein for structure and strength. So proteins can actually be lost from the hair when the cuticle layer is damaged. When we damage our hair by things like adding heat, brushing too much, detangling really rough, and even the sun can actually damage the cuticle resulting in little cracks or holes within the cuticle and protein can then escape, especially during the washing process. So let's discuss how protein ingredients actually work. So protein ingredients are added to hair care products to help fill in the gaps in our hair's cuticle. So they actually adhere to the hair and help fill in those gaps. They temporarily help strengthen the hair. So they especially adhere to those damaged areas and depending on the size of the protein, some can penetrate into the hair and some create that protective film on the hair which fills in the gaps in our hair's cuticle. This actually helps to keep moisture in the hair and keep the hair protected. This in turn helps the hair feel stronger, retain its structure and prevent future breakage. And if you didn't already know, protein ingredients are actually humectants, so they help to attract and retain moisture in the hair. So this means that proteins can also moisturize and condition the hair. And you might also notice that when you use products with proteins, your curls might spring up more and they might have more bounce to them. So some examples of protein ingredients are hydrolyzed plant-based protein. So these are things like corn, wheat, quinoa, soy. I will put some of them listed on the screen. Keratin and collagen are also types of proteins. And then you have amino acids, which are small proteins. These are like the building blocks of proteins. So depending on the size of the protein molecules, some of them are large enough to where they mainly sit on the surface and fill in the gaps in the cuticle and create that film on the hair, whereas others such as amino acids can more likely penetrate into the inner layers of the hair. One of the downsides to proteins that do create a film on the hair is they can create a kind of stiff or brittle feeling if you're overusing them or if you end up with a buildup of protein on the hair. And that's how some people get that stiff feeling from using a lot of protein. So because amino acids are able to actually penetrate into the hair, these are less likely to cause any adverse reactions and these are better suited for people who can't really tolerate larger proteins as much, such as people with very coarse textured hair, people with low porosity hair that have that very tightly bound cuticle that don't really let anything in. And then also people who have very healthy hair that don't have a lot of damage, they can really benefit more from those amino acids and smaller type of proteins. So protein ingredients can be added to any type of hair products. You will usually find them in styling products such as curl creams and gels because they really do help to create that protective film on the hair. And they can also help to smooth out the cuticle for styling and help the hair retain its structure. So some examples of products that do contain protein ingredients are the Featherlight Protein Cream from Curlsmith and the Weedad Advanced Climate Control Stronger Hold Gel. So this Featherlight Protein Cream from Curlsmith is part of the strength recipe. Anything with that purple label from Curlsmith has protein ingredients in it, except for the Miracle Shield. I don't think that one does have proteins in it, but all of the purple line is meant to strengthen the hair. So this 
Curl cream in particular does help to style and define the curls. Looking at the label here, I see hydrolyzed rice protein towards the top of the list. So that means that it's pretty high in the formulation. But there's also a lot of moisturizing ingredients. So just because a product contains protein doesn't mean that it's not moisturizing. It is actually going to help the hair retain moisture. Then the Weedad Advanced Climate Control Heat and Humidity Stronger Hold Gel. You all know that this is one of my all time favorite gels. This one has quite a bit of protein ingredients in it. It has wheat amino acids at the top of the ingredients list. So that's those amino acids that are smaller and they're less likely to cause brittleness. Then it also has hydrolyzed wheat protein in it. It also has polyquaternium, which is really going to help to humidity proof the hair. And it's also a film former. So there's a lot of film forming ingredients in this, which is probably why they chose to include proteins in this formulation. And then it's also packed with very moisturizing ingredients like glycerin and shea butter. So this is a really great formula gel. This is definitely one of my favorite formulas. I do have some coarse areas in my hair and I don't find that I get brittleness from using products that do contain protein. I just make sure to not overdo it. Like if I'm using a deep conditioner with protein, I won't use a bunch of stylers that have protein in it. I just pick and choose in a couple of products versus all of my products having protein and using those in consecutive wash days. So another great way to get in protein ingredients are in your deep conditioning treatments. So deep conditioners are a conditioner for your hair, but they usually contain ingredients that can penetrate into the hair and they are left on longer. So they have more of a chance at penetrating versus just depositing on the hair and rinsing off. So these are used after your shampoo and you leave them on for anywhere from 10 to 15, 30 minutes, depending on the label. The one I have to share here with you today, I actually use this one today for this wash day. This is the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Deep Conditioning Mask. I consider this one a pro protein mask because it does contain quite a few protein ingredients. So there's a lot of strengthening ingredients in it. It says that it's for damaged hair. Usually if you will see damage repair on the label, you will most often find protein ingredients in the ingredients label. So there's lots of moisturizing ingredients that come first on this label, lots of oils in here. And then getting down to the actual proteins, I see hydrolyzed corn protein, hydrolyzed wheat protein, hydrolyzed soy protein. So it's got three in a row. I even see biotin in here. So there's a lot of strengthening ingredients in this product, but there's also very moisturizing ingredients. This one's also very lightweight, so it's gonna be excellent if you do have very fine hair. So the most potent form of protein would be in a protein treatment. So this would be in a treatment that is not just like a deep conditioner. These typically don't have really moisturizing ingredients in them. They're just meant to load your hair up with protein. So an example of this would be the Afoji protein treatment. I think that's how you say it. I don't have this on hand, so I will put up a photo of it so you can see what I'm talking about, but I have heard so much about this in reading different curly hair blogs and watching videos, so I know a lot of people like this, and this is what comes to mind when I think of a protein treatment. So this is a treatment that was initially mainly just done in the salon. It contains collagen and vegetable protein, so it has some of those strong proteins in it. And this one's actually used after shampooing, and then you're supposed to let it sit for a bit, and then you rinse it out. And then they also have a conditioner or like a moisturizer step that you do afterwards, which is then gonna help soften up the hair because as I mentioned, the actual protein treatment is probably gonna make the hair feel somewhat stiff because it is adding that strength and that structure to the hair. So you definitely have to follow up with the moisturizer step. So as I mentioned, there's often not a lot of conditioning or moisturizing ingredients in protein treatments. So I find that they can cause more adverse reactions for people where it gets overly stiff or maybe they end up with a buildup of protein and and they're also lacking conditioning in their hair. And this can be much more risky for people to use at home, especially if they don't understand that or if they're not using it properly. I know a lot of these were designed to be used in the salon. And if you're someone who doesn't even have that much damage or you're not that familiar with your hair and it's damage level, then you might not even need protein treatments. So the more potent the product, like in a protein treatment, the more likely that you could get those adverse reactions from a protein. And this is mainly why I have never tried this treatment. I don't find that I need it. So now let's talk about bond repairing products. So bond repairing products are becoming more and more popular. You're seeing them pop up in so many different types of brands, even drugstore brands. You can find bond repairing products in everything from shampoos and conditioners to pre-wash treatments to leave-ons and even mixing drops which I will talk about. 
But let's first cover what actually are hair bonds because it's helpful to understand how they work. So going back to the structure of our hair, as we know our hair is made up of protein, specifically keratin, and it's actually held together by bonds. So there are three types of bonds in the hair, including hydrogen and ionic or salt bonds, which are physical bonds in the hair that are reformed by heat, water, and changes in pH. And the third type of bond are disulfide or covalent bonds, and these are broken down when the hair is damaged. So bond repairing products work by actually relinking those broken bonds on the inner layers of the hair. So these changes are more permanent as long as you're maintaining healthier hair. And you will usually notice more bounce in your curls as your curls get healthier and as you're consistent with using these. I've even noticed an immediate effect on my hair after washing and styling and using bond repairing treatments and the curliness of my hair or the amount of bounce that it has. Especially as it's repairing your hair, you're gonna notice more of that curl structure intact. So they work by penetrating into the deep layers of the hair to actually repair it, which is crazy considering that we can typically only actually fix damage by cutting it off. While it's still advised for severely damaged hair to grow that out and get it cut off, bond repairing treatments can help you get by and help strengthen the hair that is currently on your head as you were growing out that damage and also help you just maintain stronger and healthier hair. And from what I've noticed, you're less likely to experience adverse reactions from bond repairing products because they're not just forming a film on the hair, they're not building up on the hair, they're actually working on the inner layers of the hair to relink those broken bonds. So they're a little bit more foolproof compared to using protein treatments. And this makes bond repairing treatments a great option for people who may be more likely to experience those adverse reactions from protein treatments. So there are various ingredients that work to repair the broken bonds in our hair and they're often patented by the brands. So Olaplex and K18 or some of the more popular bond repairing treatments. I've only tried Olaplex before. I know a lot of you have tried K18 and recommend it all the time. I know it is more expensive than Olaplex, but that's another one that does work to repair all three types of bonds in the hair. So Olaplex was actually one of the first popular brands for bond repairing treatments. It initially started as mainly just a salon treatment. So the first couple of steps in the Olaplex treatment are done in the salon and it's initially designed just for people who have highlight damage, like when people are getting chemical services done in the salon, that's when they're using Olaplex. And then Olaplex number three is then advised to be used at home sort of as a maintenance take home type of product to maintain the strength of people's hair who have been highlighted or damaged by some of those chemical services. I started testing it out for damage. Now I did used to have highlights in my hair and that's mainly what I was trying to do is repair the damage that I have from highlights and I was growing out those highlights and gradually getting trims. So I started using Olaplex but had never had the treatments done in the salon. So anyone can purchase Olaplex number three and just use it for maintenance. And because it does work to repair all three types of bonds in our hair, you can even use Olaplex and K18 and any of the bond repairing treatments that work to repair all three even if you don't have highlight damage because we still get damage in our hair from regular wear and tear like detangling, brush styling, the sun can really do a number on our hair and using heat even from a diffuser. So that's why I still incorporate Olaplex every once in a while and other bond repairing treatments even though I don't color or bleach my hair or use hair straighteners. So this is actually used as a pre-shampoo treatment. So you apply it on wet hair. Your hair has to be wet for it to work and then you shampoo it after you let it sit then you wanna deep condition your hair afterwards. So another bond repairing product is Curlsmith's Bond Curl Rehab Salve. So this product has some natural ingredients in it, but it's unique in that it contains both bond repairing ingredients and protein ingredients. So this is sort of like a hybrid between a bond repairing product and a protein treatment. This is mainly gonna benefit people who have damaged or high porosity hair, but can be used by people who just have regular damage too. They just wouldn't need to use it quite as often. And it does work to repair all three types of bonds in our hair. So because this has protein, it would also help to fill in the gaps in our hair's cuticle to help increase the manageability of it, smooth out the cuticle some, and prevent the hair from losing future protein and also help it hold on to moisture better. So you kind of get the benefits of both. Both Olaplex and Bond Curls should only be used about once a week, just depending on the damage level of your hair. I wouldn't really use them more than that. 
And if you don't really have a lot of damage or if you're just someone like me that wants to just maintain healthier hair and prevent future breakage, then you could use them about once a month or so for maintenance. So even though these bond repairing treatments do have some conditioning products in them just to help them spread on your hair more and they have that creamy feel, they don't actually have a lot of conditioning ingredients in them and they're not really meant to condition and soften the hair. So you might notice that your hair feels a little bit stiff after using them. I know some people have mentioned that and that is because you have to make sure you are deep conditioning after shampooing. So you apply them first, shampoo, and then deep condition after. I guess if you did have hair that doesn't really need a lot of conditioning, you could just use a regular conditioner, but make sure you're getting that conditioning step in afterwards. You also need to make sure that you are following the directions on the label and only leaving them on for the time that it says. So it says on the bottle how long that you should leave it on. I do not recommend leaving these on all day they actually stop working once your hair dries out. So you're not getting any benefit from leaving these treatments in your hair all day. And definitely don't leave them in your hair overnight. That's really bad for your scalp and you can over proteinize your hair with this one. And it's also not advised to sleep in Olaplex as well. You're not getting any benefits from that. People can also not really notice a difference at all from bond repairing products if their hair is so damaged that they don't even have a cuticle layer left. This would be very extreme damage, like through a lot of bleaching. So if you've tried any of these and it made no difference in your hair, it could be because you don't even have a cuticle left for it to show some of that repairing effect. And on the flip side, if your hair was very healthy, then you might not even need these at all. If you're someone that doesn't do anything to your hair and you keep it protected in the sun, then you wouldn't even really need bond repairing products. So there are also bond repairing shampoos, conditioners, leave-ins, and then mix-in drops as well. So leave-in treatments like the Living Proof Triple Bond Complex are designed to be left on the hair. So you would apply this to clean hair after it's been washed. You only need two pumps of this, which is probably why it is so small. A little goes a long way with it. You apply it all over, you comb it through, and then you let it sit on your hair for 10 minutes before you go in with your styling product. So you don't rinse it off, you would go straight to your stylers. So this does work to repair all three types of bonds in our hair. So no matter what your damage type is, you can use this. And the added benefits of this one is it actually helps protect from heat and can protect your hair from the sun as well. So it's a great first step to use before your stylers. And so you could use this about once a week. It is advised to just use it once a week. So if you do wash more than that, you don't have to use it every single wash. So you would still need a heat protectant to use on those other wash days. So I've been using this for quite a bit now, several months. I don't use it every single week because I am testing other stuff as well, but so far I've really been enjoying it. It's really hard to tell since I don't have severe damage of how much of a difference that these make. So I don't have like true before and afters for this, but I can tell a big difference in my hair when I do use it, like my results, I can tell definitely feel stronger and I have more of that structure and strength to my hair, but I don't really have like results over time with damage repair to show you because my hair is overall fairly healthy. So just a few more options to show you. This is the We Dad Unbreakable Bonds Mixing Drops. So these are bond repairing drops that you can add into your styling products or your leave-in conditioner. So this is another leave-on type product, but you can add Add it to your existing products. These are unique in that they are fragrance free. So if you're someone that is worried about fragrance or has a sensitive scalp, this is something that you could use. And they're also unique in that they contain hyaluronic acid, collagen, and rice protein. So these do have some protein in it and it also has some of those moisturizing ingredients. So as I mentioned, these other bond repairing products aren't inherently conditioning. They're really just meant to relink those broken bonds in your hair, but this does have some of those humectants like hyaluronic acid that are going to help attract moisture into your hair. I also noticed that on this ingredients label, the protein ingredient is higher on the list compared to the bond repairing ingredients, which could indicate that it has more protein than it does bond repairing ingredients. So just wanted to let you know. I also have the we Dead Unbreakable Bonds bond building shampoo and conditioner. So this is also from that fragrance free line from We Dead. So you might find bond repairing ingredients in shampoos and conditioners as well. And the main advantage of that is it's just easier to get in that bond repairing in your existing steps. So it's not an extra step. You would just replace your shampoo and conditioner with these, or you would rotate these in. So you could use another one on other days and then use these once a week or so. I haven't seen any Thing in the labels that 
indicate like how often to use these, but from what I understand, you can use them every wash day. It doesn't say otherwise. I also noticed that these are extremely softening, so that could be that they target those salt bonds more, like they have a lower pH. So they help the cuticle to be more smoothed out, less tangly, less frizzy. So if you do have very tangly, damaged, brittle hair, these are definitely gonna help it to feel softer and overall healthier. I find them to be very moisturizing, and then they also have those strengthening ingredients. So I've never gotten like a stiff feeling from using these. So which is best for you, protein treatments or bond repairing treatments? Well, it really comes down to the type of damage repair that you want. So both protein and bond repairing ingredients work to strengthen the hair and to prevent breakage, but they do this in different ways. Think of protein treatments and protein ingredients more of a temporary fix because they help to condition and also help to fill in the gaps in our cuticle by creating that film. So that's gonna help our hair retain moisture. Whereas bond repairing treatments are more of a permanent fix as long as you keep your hair healthy after using them and also continue to use them if you are causing additional damage to your hair. So those actually are working to relink the broken bonds in our hair, which is more of a permanent fix for damage. So depending on your type of damage and the severity of your damage, you might benefit from one more than the other. Unfortunately, there's not a cut and dry way to know. You can really just experiment and see what works for you. The other difference is that adverse reactions are more likely to occur and protein treatments because they do cause that stiff or that brittle feeling in the hair, which is from a buildup of protein and or a lack of conditioning afterwards. Some people have said that they've experienced that from using bond repair products, but perhaps they didn't even need bond repair products or they weren't using them properly, but you don't hear of that happening as much as with protein type of ingredients and products. So in my opinion, bond repairing treatments are more foolproof. You can't really mess up using them as long as you're using them properly. You can't really overuse them as long as you follow the directions and use them about once a week and don't leave them on too long. And even with bond building products, it is important to make sure that you are conditioning your hair because they're not inherently conditioning. They're not going to make your hair feel like softer or anything like that, which is usually the effect that people expect from doing a treatment, but these are meant to provide that strength and structure to your hair. If you're wondering how to pick the right one for you and how often to use these different types of products, I created a free downloadable chart that you can download from my blog. I will have it linked down below, but I list out every single combination of hair type from porosity and texture and tell you exactly how often you should be using these different types of products. So this will make it so much easier to understand. The link for that will be in the description box down below. So you might be wondering if you can use both and you definitely can. I incorporate both protein ingredients and bond repairing ingredients in my routine. I like using protein ingredients in my styling products because of those film forming properties. My hair leans a little bit more higher porosity so I definitely need that film forming and that moisture retention that proteins can help with. And then I'd like to to use bond building treatments on occasion. I might do them a couple times a month or once a month just to maintain the strength in my hair because I do still diffuse using heat. I like doing brush styling, which can kind of chip away at the hair's cuticle and my hair gets exposed to the sun every once in a while as well. So which do you prefer in your hair? Let me know down below. I'm also going to share some more recommendations for products because I have tested other bond building products and stuff that I haven't shared yet here on my channel, but I'm going to share those over on my Instagram stories throughout this week. So I will have the link for my Instagram down below if you want to follow along. So if you're still needing more help with damage repair, if you're transitioning, if you're just getting started with your curls, then I recommend checking out the video that I have linked right here on the screen. It's all about different reasons that curl journeys fail. So if you've recently thought about giving up on your curls and going back to straightening and not wearing your hair naturally curly, definitely check this out because I share a lot of mistakes that I made along the way and how to avoid those failures so that way you can have healthier curls. So I will talk to you over in that video. Bye everyone.